What's up, YouTube? This is the Billy Bob HD bringing you another Let's Play today. I've got a brand new campaign. This is Total War Attila, and we're going to start as the Langobards. So this is part of the Longbeards DLC that has just come out today. Uh, and <clears throat> a lot of people are kind of upset, you know, because this DLC comes pretty quickly after original release to Total War Attila, um, so a lot of people felt like they didn't really get a good chance to get to know all of the factions as well as they wanted before the DLC came out. I personally, um, I think it's cool. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I like having a lot of faction, like a lot of playable factions. Uh, so, um, we're going to start off the campaign as the Langobards. Just a quick view there if you're curious. Uh, the DLC also comes with the Alamans here and the Burgundians here. So, uh, Langobards. When the small noble Winili tribe faced the Vandals, their god, Godun, declared he would give victory to the tribe he saw first on the day of battle, and seeing the Winili with their women warriors asked, Who are these Longbeards? and awarded them victory. The tribe was, from then on, known as the Langobards. Now they live along the River Elbe, far from their roots, led by their king who shares power with his people whenever possible. The Langobards are a determined tribe who have weathered many storms to achieve greatness. Their history is marked by struggle and bloody conflict, and their future doubtless holds more of the same. Yet the Langobards will emerge victorious with renewed strength to face anything the gods can throw at them. All right, let's go ahead and start the campaign. You can see we sort of start in Central Europe here. I'm pretty sure we're going to be fairly close to the uh, Roman em Eastern Roman Empire, Western Roman Empire. Maybe not. Um, actually, we could have a threat from the Huns and the Vandals, etc. as well. Let's go ahead and start. Hordes are formidable as they represent the agricultural, economic, and recruitment potential of the city combined with the mobility, might of an army. This all makes them vulnerable, however. Lose a horde in battle, and you can also lose a major cog in your faction infrastructure. Yeah, so leave me a comment of what you think about the DLC coming out so quickly. Are you somebody that believes, hey, this is cool? Or are you somebody that says, hey, it was too quick? Tell me why. What do you think? Okay, we're almost there. We're also going to be, um, uh, in case you're wondering if you've tuned into some of my other uh, Total War Attila series... We will still be continuing the campaign as the Geats, uh, as I do. I want to have a Viking campaign going on along with this one. The Langobards are a Germanic tribe. They had some pretty cool units from what I saw so far. Uh, really good spearmen. Really good uh, melee units as well. The air was filled with smoke and blood. Rome was weak. I'm actually going to skip through this uh, little intro part here because I'm sure by now most of you have already seen it. The tribes grew in... All right, here we go. Worship of the great god Godan has left its mark on the Langobards. Your name and even your appearance pays tribute to his wisdom. Like him, you will have to rely on wit and diplomacy to compensate for your inferior power in these troubled times. Already your silver tongue has earned the approval of your Germanic neighbors. All you need do is pick the mightiest ally. The Franks to the north are powerful and well disposed to you, as are the neighboring Alemanni. In order to demonstrate your worth, consider eradicating the vandals that pillage these lands. At the end of the road, a great prize beckons. Godan has revealed the coming of a great Langobard empire in Rome. Oh, shit. He's telling us to go after Rome. He also said, uh, watch out for the Vandals. Uh, that's a horde that's pretty close to me right now. Mission, mission issued. They made ready for war. Survive until the following date, spring of year 400. So that's five years from now. Bonus objectives will be added. That gives us a... $2,000 treasury reward. We're going to want to try to go after that. Uh, there is our faction leader. Warriors all. He has a decent sized army. A uh, couple of levy spearmen there. 
Langobard Clubman. Those are both the basic sort of melee and spearman units. Horse Hewers, excellent attack against cavalry. Yeah, those are pretty cool. Uh, Young Wolves, very poor armor. Good missile block chance. This is actually a, de a pretty decent army, to be honest, uh, to start out with. Uh, the, they are named the Tree Breakers, Germanic Brigands. Excellent capture power, excellent rate of fire, low ammunition. So those are like skirmishers. And then I do have one Germanic mounted warband as well. Let's go to the faction tab here. Look at the family tree. Uh, pretty bare at the moment. Um, I do have a wife. She's 27. I am 29 years old, so that's good. Uh, my son is 15, my heir. And I do have a daughter that's 13 years old as well. We're going to want to keep an eye on him and see... And maybe a year or two when we'll be able to marry him off. We need to start making, uh, continuing the bloodline there. We've got a 55% power rating, which is respectable. Do, 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 do. Over here, we have 60% control, is what this is showing. Uh, Dominion is a measure of your influence over the faction, 51%. So kind of low on the Dominion there. Uh, the control is at least 60% on that, so that's good. Let's go to the Diplomacy tab. Take a, The Alamans, of course, like us, the other Germanic tribe. Um, we're not really at war with anybody. We are currently trading with the Alamans as well. They might come to us with a non-aggression at some point. So since they are friendly over this way... Um... We might could go after the Saxons. They probably like us the least. Uh, hmm. I think the Thuringians here is actually a great first target. You can see the strength rating here, the balance of power. I'm way more powerful than they are. Macromans down here, they're going to be Germanic as well. I'm power more powerful than them as well. Let's take a look at the map really quickly and see how far away those vandals are I don't really see them at first glance what we could do uh, we actually have a second general Ready here just a regular guy um, smaller this is the wooden men smaller force than we have back at home here but yeah I'm gonna use my king and keep him here to sort of uh, guard home base let's pick a technology we're gonna go with the military tech to start out with two turns I have 970 income. That's kind of weak, to be honest. Can we upgrade any buildings to help out with that? We can. We'll get 200 wealth from building the village here. Food consumption minus 15. We actually don't have any food going at the moment. Uh, I don't want to do this quite yet as my public order is okay. My sanitation looks okay for the moment as well. And we also have an artisan. He can build a clay pit. Uh, yeah. We're going to want to take a look at these buildings after we tech up a little bit. But uh, these are going to be the military buildings that help us build new units. And I don't have a chance to build... Damn. I was going to say I don't have a chance to build up any further right now. Because I don't have a farm. We've got zero food. So that means we have to go on the attack. Hopefully take Lupford on over here. And, yeah, I think that's what we should do. We'll see how expensive these units are going to be, though, to recruit. Yeah, a lot of these guys have a heavy upkeep cost. 125 per unit, it looks like. We might have to use both armies to go to war, actually. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Shit. <clears throat> it's going to leave my... It will leave my capital exposed, but we are not currently at war with the Vandals or anything like that. We haven't even technically discovered them yet. Um, hmm. Check one more time. Yeah, I don't see anybody. Okay. So for the time being, let's uh, we'll move this guy up to the border here. Okay, we do need to tech up to order um, spies at this point as well. We can't build any onagers, can we? No. 
Do I, can I get one through a mercenary, though? Hire mercenaries. Yes, I can. Get one of those for now. Do I have uh, mercenaries that are potentially cheaper per turn to uphold? Yeah. We can get some Germanic hunters. Although I already have some of those. The mercenary Germanic pikes are a little cheaper at 110. So I'll get one of those as well. Alright, cool. The Onager is going to help us with the siege over here of Lubfordum. Let's go ahead and end the turn while we're uh, waiting for those guys to finish up. Oh, that's right. We can assign a governor. Really? It's going to cost me 825 gold to do that? Fearless warrior. This guy has a lot of influence. We'll put him in the uh, governor spot there of Germania. Oh, whoops. I kicked him out. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to click that. Was this him? There we go. Okay. He's pretty loyal to us, too, with a six. Oh, yeah, we need a provincial edict. Um, I think, there, isn't there one that gives us food production? Construction rate minus ten. Oh, the growth will help out, actually, to give us another slot. Yeah, let's go with the growth rate. Cool. All right, end turn. So if we pick up this other territory over here, again, remember, we need to find a way to get some food production going. Western Roman Empire normally takes forever. Okay, nice. It's back on us. Okay, faction has been encountered. The Vandals. Ready for duty. We've got an incoming general that's ready. Uh, and we got our edict out there, which is nice. Go to the diplomacy tab. The Vandals here. We're not currently at war. We're rated as neutral, and our relationship is actually deteriorating. Religious aversion, treaties with the Alamans, gifts to the given to the Franks. I see. Well, if I go over to... It might be a good idea to actually try and pick up a non-aggression pact with these guys. Oh, I already have one. Wait. Break non-aggression pact with who? We have a trade. Huh. There we go. Okay, we now have a non-aggression pact with them. Uh, they're, the Alamans are currently at war with the Vandals. Um, I think that's good for now. Yeah, I think that's where I'll keep it for now. The Saxons could be a threat to us. Yeah, we're currently rated as neutral. That's a potential... Um, Greetings. That's a potential oh, threat. Plainly, for we are an honest folk and value honest in others. Uh, doesn't look like they take a trade agreement there. Do, do, do. Chance of success low there. What if I throw some cash into the deal? Whoops. <clears throat> Offer payment. 2,000 bucks. Will that do it? No. Um, how about 4,000 bucks? Moderate. That's going to take, like, all of my gold. Nah, we'll leave it alone for now. We just won't be aggressive towards them at all. Okay. So, since the Vandals are pissy, I wonder if it's going to be too much of a risk to go after Lepfordum. We could do it, though. Let's see how bad my public order gets if I take my army out. Yeah, it's negative. That sucks. What if I do this? For the tribe. Get to it, men. Put my smaller army inside of the uh, town there and still retain a positive public opinion. 
while at the same time taking my king over here and posting him up for an attack. We'll be going into autumn, so uh, hopefully we can get the attack in before winter hits. I don't want to take any attrition on that. So just to get him some movement points back. Can he make it there? No. He, he's going to fall barely short. So, damn, we do have to waste one turn. That's okay. We'll pick a new uh, technology next turn as well. I humbly ask that my people's They're demanding 100 gold for military access. I think that's fine. We'll do that. Just because I want them to help fight the Vandals, and if they're in my territory, maybe the AI will help me out a little bit there. That'd be nice. If the Vandals are still out there and a threat by the time we... Uh, aha! They're feeling threatened that my army is on their borders. Uh, so, I'm going to deny the non-aggression pact there. That makes sense that they would send that over to me. They're like, hey, what's going on? Why is your army on the border there? Okay, new technology. Let's get that going first. Um, go to the Militarized Society. And then we'll shoot back down here and get the community property after that. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, go to Diplomacy. Go over to the Thuringians here. And we will declare war on you. They don't have any allies, which is good. Hmm. We're technically more powerful than them, but not by a ton, to be honest. Okay, we've declared war, so let's go ahead and move in really quickly and see what we're up against. It uh, looks else? to be fairly even, to be honest, as far as the stack size. But I wonder if they would get a garrison as well. It is a smaller town, only 255 gold, or wealth, I should say. Let's run up here and see what the... Oh. If I encircle them, maybe this will improve next turn. But they're going to have to come out and attack me, really. All right, let's go with encircle. I can't build any siege equipment or anything. I do have that onager, though. Okay, we'll maintain the encirclement, I think, for now. Uh, meanwhile, I think it makes sense to go ahead and recruit, even though it's expensive. The cheapest ones are the young wolves here. I'll get two more units there of young wolves. Okay. And the turn, uh, if they come out and attack me, that's going to be a little scary since it's my king. We should have maybe pulled back. I don't know. Kind of a risk. So one thing I like about uh, Total War Attila is the family tree. It really makes you uh, appreciate your generals and try to protect them as much as possible. The Macromons now are asking for a non-aggression pact. I think I'm going to go ahead and decline them on that. Good news is, too, the Vandals are actually moving down this way, so heading away from me. Okay, we're going to break and retreat. Destination reached. If they come out and try to get me, they're n it doesn't look like they're going to. Okay, so now we're in winter. My main force is taking attrition. Unless I fortify him. I tell you what. We're going to take my smaller army, move it up into range to hopefully support us on another attack. Okay, I do have my other general now with me. A lot better, lot, 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 lot better outcome it looks like it could potentially be. So, let's attack. Fight on the battlefield. Alright, let's go. Extremes of heat or cold will give a fatigue penalty to units not used to living and fighting in such conditions. Troops from these areas will continue to suffer attrition. Uh, 
we have, let's see, they have a smaller garrison of only 360 men, while I have uh, backup forces of over 1,100. We're going to use the honor guard to try to damage their um, their towers, I think, before sending in the troops. They do have three units of archers. I have two. Interesting. Don't start your attack by engaging the enemy's elite troops. In a perfect battle, you would rout their army without fighting their best units at all. Weather conditions. As the attacking force, you can choose. It is dry. I think we'll go ahead and start the deployment. Okay. First things first, we want to pick a good spot to put the onager. My reinforcements, it does look like, are going to be coming in from this area back here. Yeah. Now, we've got, uh, we're sort of on a downslope over here. And, of course, their capital, their city over here is on top of the hill. Got a couple of defenses, a tower out front on this side here. And lots of towers on the opposite side, so we're going to avoid... That side, that back side of the fort altogether. So we're going to want to make sure when our reinforcements come in, I'm going to swing them around this way. Let's take the onagers now. Uh, whoops. Look pretty cool. I want to look at the units really quickly. It's always cool to look at. Germanic levy. There's our bowmen there. Oh yeah, there's those young wolf units, the swordsmen. Look pretty badass, right? Uh, here is, is this my, infantry! oh, this is heavy, okay, heavy melee infantry, very cool, they have shields, so that's going to help us against any potential archer attacks, alright, so back to the onager placing, I mean, even if I put it, uh, I don't know, like somewhere like right here, I think that would be good. Maybe like this. Like right here. See if I can get them to spin around. Yeah, like that. In order to protect them, I think I'll take some... Do I have spearmen? I do. Some defense, a defensive unit here just to watch over them. I don't know if we're going to be in range of that tower or not when we go ahead and start the battle. I'm also going to take my general and move him back to safety like this. And then the rest of these guys, um, let's take our archers, bring them back a little bit. Yeah. Spearmen. Of course, you're going to be in towards the front of the line there. And then swordsmen, you know, I'm just going to go in with those inf those uh, melee infantry and sort of rush those guys. Uh, Germanic levy. Of course, we'll put you back down over here. Okay. Start the battle. It is useful to put you. Take the onager first and foremost, and have him have him fire upon that tower, so we can bring melee units up into the city. Reinforcing troops. 